Hi, this is Ramesh. In my previous sessions, we have seen how a transaction is processed between a merchant and acquirer. Basically, there are two legs. One is authorization and the other one is reconciliation. So the similar way, now we will see how the transaction is processed between an acquiring bank, payment system and an issuing bank. So let's try to understand how the card and payment transaction is processed between these three entities. As per payment scheme guidelines, there are two different methods of processing a card and payment transaction. One is dual message system, DMS and the other one is single message system, SMS. Normally credit or prepaid card can be processed in dual message system and the other way around debit or prepaid card can also be processed in single message system. So it all depends on scheme to scheme how they support different type of cards, credit, debit or prepaid. In today's session, we will only discuss about dual message system. As the name itself implies, there are two different lags. I would give them two different names. One is base one, other one is the base two. So what is base one? Base one is the authorization when we are performing the authorization. And what is base two? Base two is the clearing. So this is similar to what we have seen between post and acquiring bank, right? So first of all, we were doing authorization. And once the authorization was done, then the merchant was closing the batch on the post device and they were uh, doing the reconciliation between merchant and acquiring bank. So that second step is similar to clearing. So basically we can divide it into two parts. We can name it as base one and base two. I will give you an example so that you can easily understand the concept of dual message system. So if you have a credit card and you are using the internet banking of your credit card system then there are two options if you have ever noticed it one is outstanding or unsettled it's depending on bank to bank there can be one option for outstanding transactions or unsettled transaction or can be the unbuilt transaction the other one is the built transaction or settled transaction so what is the difference so when we perform the transaction which is the base one okay we only perform the transaction at the post terminal level so post terminal sends to acquiring bank acquiring bank send it to uh, payment scheme and payment scheme send it to issuer so when this transaction happened in dual message system the transaction in base one is always in a status of outstanding or unbuilt because the second lag or the base two is still pending so that is the reason if you have ever noticed in your internet banking when you perform the transaction it remains in this status for few days one or two or three days but after few days the transaction is removed from here the transaction is gone out from this queue and it moved to the other queue which is the build or settled transaction so this is the base two there are four different scenarios possible in between the acquiring and issuing bank like one is dual message system and dual message system it means acquiring bank and payment scheme they are using dual message system to process the transaction between these two but here in payment scheme and issuing they are also using dual message system but it is also possible if they are using dual message system they can use a single message system see so this is the second scenario dual message system single message system third scenario is here we have single message system however between payment scheme and issuer we have dual message system and the last one is in both the places we have single message system between acquiring and issuing so these are the four different scenarios so we will as of now focus on scenario number one first of all we will understand the dual message system between acquiring bank and payment scheme so let's take an example there is an acquiring bank and they have around hundreds of merchant at the end of day all the merchants will close the business they will submit the reconciliation batch to the acquiring bank once acquiring bank reconcile all the messages they post the transaction to the acquiring bank system this is something which we have seen already in the last session so till this point we know when they submit all the transactions 
they create one merchant payment file to pay the merchant now the next step is because here they are paying only to the merchant how they are going to settle with the issuing bank this is the next step here so once they post all the transactions to their recurring bank system they generate the outgoing file what's that outgoing file is let's assume like this acquiring bank is supporting visa mastercard and amex for example there are around 1000 transactions okay so based on the bin acquiring bank will check these transactions belongs to which payment system so we will understand assume like 300 transaction were related to visa 400 for mastercard and 300 for so what will happen they will first of all identify the bin number and based on the bin they will segregate the payment scheme so now in this at this place they will create three different files one file for visa another file for mastercard and the another file for amex now when the payment scheme received the outgoing file from the acquiring bank now they also need to do some processing internally in their system so that they can submit these files to the issuing bank and then finally issuing bank will also do their processing within the system to build the customer so for example this payment scheme received total 400 transactions from acquiring bank now what this payment scheme has to do because this is possible these 400 transactions may belongs to different different issuing bank now depending on the bin number because different cards can belong to different banks depending on the bin number payment scheme will generate further different different files so we will assume 100 transaction were belongs to bank a bank b c and d so all the 400 transactions are divided in 100 100 so what happens now payment scheme took a file of 400 transaction from acquiring bank they process in their system finally they created four different files this file is called as clearing file we can call it as a base 2 file depending on the scheme whether it is visa mastercard amex diner so whatever payment scheme they have their own specification they have their own standards to you know call this file name as a clearing or a base to file so for us to understand this is another outgoing file from the payment scheme which they are submitting to the issuing bank so now this issuing bank a b c and d they also have their internal card processing applications so we can say they have their own card management system once they receive this file from the payment scheme they load it to their card management system now the dual message system between payment scheme and issuing bank payment scheme created one file which we call it as outgoing file from payment scheme it's a clearing file or a base 2 file that file will be treated as incoming file for issuing bank right so payment scheme submitted the that file to issuing bank and now issuing bank has their own card management system let's assume they received the file of 100 transaction and they posted it to their card management system now this card management system should already have received these 100 transaction as a part of base one when we perform the transaction from the post so those transactions authorizations should already be there this could also be possible uh, there are some exception cases or this card management system may have you know the less number of transaction or the more transaction than the one they have received in the incoming file so we already know we already uh, discussed some of the exception cases in the previous session so this cms system could have 99 transaction or it could be possible they have 101 or 102 so depending on the exception cases so now when they receive this transaction they will post the transaction to individual customer so for example they have multiple customers so five transaction can belong to customer one ten can belong to customer two and so on so this is how they post the transaction to the card management system and then to the customer we will take an example there was a customer customer one okay that customer has two outstanding transaction from base one okay 
However, when we receive the file, the incoming file, when the transaction is posted to the customer management system, there were three transactions for this customer. Okay, so what eventually it means? Two transactions were received through the base one as an authorization. However, one transaction was not received by the issuer bank. So this is that exception case. So earlier we discussed this exception case from the acquiring point of view. Now in the issuing, how it is handled? When the issuing bank card management system will post the file, they will find this customer has three transactions. So they will try one by one. So the first transaction they will post, there was an outstanding transaction based on the card number, amount, retrieval reference number, stand number, authorization ID, or uh, there are some other fields, okay, depending on payment scheme, they will use those ISO fields and will try to find this transaction. For this outstanding, they will be amassed, right? Because this outstanding is already there in their authorization system and it is also available in the file. So they will match the file with the authorization system and they will mark it as matched since it was there in the file and it is there in the outstanding authorization system. So once they find it, they will mark it as matched. The other one also, they will find the outstanding and the file one, both are matched. But for the third transaction, issuing bank system will not be able to find the original transaction in authorization system. But since the transaction is already included in the file from the Visa or MasterCard, so that incoming file already has the transaction. So this is the exception case which might have happened in the acquiring bank system but this is being carried out from the acquiring bank system to the payment system and then finally payment system has forwarded that exception case to the issuing bank so since acquiring bank accepted it then payment scheme accepted it and then finally issuing bank has also accept that transaction forcefully in the system they will not be able to find original but still they will forcefully accept as an offline advice so they will mark it in the system as 0 to 20 transaction so this transaction will be there in the system without any original transaction however these transaction will be there in the system with matched status since they have original as well as the base 2 transaction of incoming file once the processing of this incoming file is completely done in the card management system they mark all the transaction to the build status so now in your uh, internet banking you will see whatever outstanding transaction was there those will be moved from outstanding queue to the build queue so now what happened next all the transactions have been moved from outstanding to the build status now the next step is generate the statement we will take an example let's assume we are in the month of may month 5 and you have your statement generation date is end of month every month at the last date of the month your statement is getting generated throughout the month you have done around total 10 transaction of each transaction 100 dollar so what will happen after every time two or three days later the transaction is moved to build status so at the end of month you have around thousand dollar under the build queue of an issuing bank system so what an issuing bank system will do they will pick all these transaction all the 10 transaction at the end of month and they will create your statement so they will generate the statement now in the statement you will see the detail of all these 10 transaction which you have done throughout the month and all those transaction will be there in your statement and the total amount for you to pay would be thousand dollar so this is the complete cycle of card processing in dual message system a customer was using the card throughout the month and finally at the end of month the statement is generated and he gets to know about the total amount which he needs to pay back to the issuing bank so in this video we covered the business flow of dual message system between acquiring bank and scheme and then scheme and issuing bank however in the coming videos we will cover the different scenarios 
and we will try to understand the dual message system technically from the specification point of view what is the format of uh, incoming file or outgoing file from this video if you have any doubt or any question and if you have any suggestions you can write back to my youtube channel i will try my level best to get back to you thank you very much